What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2022 video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the ladder tour that I hosted and just the general results of it. Um, like I held this ladder tour as a way to get some extra practice um, in terms of ladder games, because right now there are only two ways you can practice VGC 2022 other than hitting up individuals, and that is on the showdown ladder and on unofficial ladder tournaments. So I hosted one and we had a decent amount of participants. We had 206 participants, making it probably one of the largest uh, ladder tours that we've had online for a while, since I've seen other ones being around 100 or 120. Uh, so this was like double that. And I was actually really happy with that, even though I didn't like announce it in the video, it was just community tab and Twitter. So it got a lot of traction, uh, which made some for some pretty interesting results and some pretty interesting matches. Uh, but yeah, before we get into that, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And answer my comment question of the day, what do you think is the best restricted duo in the current format? But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So yeah, uh, 206 participants made for a decent sample size. Obviously the official ladder will have much more than 206 people. Um, here's our top five, but what I wanna talk about before we get to the top five is the top eight Pokemon in usage. There's more data I could go through, but the only one I have readily available to me is the top eight. Uh, so number one was obviously Incineroar. And Incineroar is, let me just, you know, make another uh, team here so we can just talk about individual Pokemon. Incineroar is obviously like the single best Pokemon in this format, as well as any other format. Um, and why is that? Well, it has positive matchups versus a lot of top Pokemon. Uh, versus Groudon, it can definitely take a P-Blades after an Intimidate. Versus Zacian, it like walls out Behemoth Blades. Uh, and Play Roughs, it can eat pretty comfortably if you Intimidate it first. Citrus Berry allows that to be a three-hit KO. And yeah, it's just the general tool set that this guy has. I feel like we don't really need to talk much about him, but just having access to all of these moves is kind of busted. Like there's, there's a lot of tools it can have. Like obviously it can also run like Taunt. It could also run Snarl if you really want it to. It's, it's a glue Pokemon. I call it a glue Pokemon because it's a Pokemon that if the other Pokemon on your team are synergizing well, you can like toss in an Incineroar and it will like always work. It is a very safe Pokemon to sort of glue your team together and make it more viable. But uh, yeah, so yeah, Incineroar. Sorry, I got distracted by my phone for a sec. Next up is Zacian. Uh, Zacian in the top eight obviously makes sense. I would argue it's the single best restricted in the format. Arguable, you know, arguably you could say Kyogre is as well. Uh, but I think Zacian is much more splashable than Kyogre. Uh, it partners well with pretty much every restricted that isn't like Solgaleo or Duskmane Necrozma. Um, yeah, like it's it, basically if it's not another steel type restricted, it pairs well. Like Calyrex Ice, it's a decent partner. Uh, Calyrex Shadow, it's a pretty decent partner. Dialga, maybe not. Um, Eternatus, yeah, sure. Giratina, sure. Groudon, obviously. Ho-Oh, sure. Kyogre, obviously a great partner. Curum White is an amazing partner. Lugia Lunala, if you don't have like a single, like if you're if one of your restricteds is like not very good, you can put Zacian next to it and it like makes it 20 times better just because of how well Zacian covers for things uh, with its offensive pressure because of automatically getting plus one uh, because of Intrepid Sword and just the fact that Behemoth Blade effectively makes this Pokemon a Dynamax Pokemon without having to like waste your Dynamax slot. So it can partner well with like other Dynamax Pokemon like Colossal or Venusaur, like all those Pokemon that want a Dynamax most of the time. It's a great partner for it because you basically have two of them. So yeah, the Zacian makes sense. Kyogre, this is one of the more splashable restricteds. You have to sort of you have to, you have to sort of like put yourself in a little bit more of like a hole when you use it uh, because you want to run Tornadus next to it or you might want to run um, a Whimsicott or any kind of speed control. Obviously like Thunderous or Regieleki are really good next to it, um, but it has a lot of partners. Zacian is obviously one of the best ones. We've seen some dual weather with Groudon teams next to Kyogre, but for the most part, Kyogre is just like a either a Scarf Pokemon or a Mystic Water Pokemon. We have seen some Calm Mind leftovers Kyogre, but for the most part, they want to be fast and they want to hit things. So yeah, also next to Calyrex Ice, it's absolutely busted because it covers for Torkoal, like one of the best Calyrex Ice counters in the format. Seeing a Kyogre next to a Calyrex Ice is one of the most terrifying things you can view because what do you use to beat Calyrex? You use your Incineroar to intimidate it. Oh, Kyogre's there. You use your, uh, use your Torkoal to set up the sun and then eruption it. Oh, well, yeah, Kyogre's there. Gets rid of the weather. It's just a very strong Pokemon on the format, and it's pretty easy to see why it's so high in usage. 
Uh, next up, we have Reggie Alecki. I don't even need to talk about that one in depth. I'm not going to talk about these too much more in depth. But yeah, Reggie Alecki, best electric type in the format, arguably. Amazing speed control, high damage output, and something that's been picking up in usage that I think is really disgusting, really disgusting, and I don't like it very much, is Wild Charge Physical Reggie Alecki. Because you can tag on like Electro Web, you can tag on like Volt Switch, you can still run Protect and stuff, but for the most part, like you're gonna wanna click this move for your main damage. So you can like max out that attack and put a life orb on it. And people use this to like one shot absurd things. I'm pretty sure wild charge is like, when you turn it into like max lightning and give it a life orb, it can like start one shotting things that typically run special defense. Like Zacian doesn't run a lot of physical defense. It runs special defense to live things from Kyogre. Well, all of a sudden, Kyogre isn't like the, the biggest threat for it. Now it's the Regieleki that outspeeds it and one shots it with Max Lightning. So yeah, physical Max Lightning is a threat and that's something I just want to bring attention to. It is a thing that's happening right now and I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> Thunderous is a great anti-intimidate bomb. Whimsicott does Whimsicott things. And Venusaur is like the best Dynamax Pokemon in the format. The fact that Venusaur can deal consistent damage output um, over the course of a match or even just in the end game where it's arguably better with uh, Max Vine Lash. If I could actually get Vine Lash in here. I don't even know if it'll show up. Yeah, Max Vine Lash. Obviously, it's coming off a of Leaf Storm, right? Um, but Max Vine Lash is busted because if even if it like hits something and it resists it like a Zacian, with a Life Orb and Max Special Attack, this thing is going to be doing like 25 to 30% to a Zacian minimum. And then you take one sixth of your health. I think it's like a sixth. Yeah, it's, you take a sixth of your health bar as like an after effect damage for four turns, which is broken. It's absolutely broken. And the fact that there's only a couple of good grass types in the format, like Rillaboom, maybe Kartana, and Venusaur itself, means that there are limited Pokemon that are immune to the effect of Vine Lash. So, yeah. Also, Weather Ball. You don't have to invest much into Weather Ball, or much into Special Attack. If you put a Life Orb onto it, all of a sudden you, like, start Okoing Zacian in the sun. So, yeah. Obviously, Sludge Bomb. I honestly don't think Sleep Powder is very good this format. Uh, Sleep Powder is unreliable, and I think that there is... It, you can, like, use it, right? But it feels like it's not worth it using anymore. When you're using a Venusaur, you want to be able to, like, just click offensive moves. You want to, like, click buttons, basically. So, yeah. Also, Venusaur can be pretty bulky. Um, with Chlorophyll, it, like, outspeeds things. If you want to outspeed a Reggie Lucky, you can run, like, a Timid Nature uh, and just hit... 139 and then all of a sudden the rest of your stats can go into oh let me max out my hp let me give like a little bit of spe let me let me give a little bit of special attack and let me put the rest into defenses and all of a sudden you have like a really bulky scary venusaur that can take a behemoth blade from azation and a max airstream from thunderous so it's a very flexible pokemon it's splashable and very customizable which is i think one of the scariest things you could face in the format so yeah i think it's probably if, if Incineroar and Zacian and Kyogre aren't the best Pokemon in the format, this one definitely is. And I'm willing to make that argument that Venusaur might be the best one in the format, period. It's just that uh, these guys are more splashable and don't require a, a Sun Pokemon or some kind of speed control. So yeah, Groudon, it's just a Venusaur enabler. Obviously, it's, it's good for helping out versus Kyogre because you set up the Sun. And it's good versus Zacian because it can take Behemoth Blades pretty easily if you intimidate them. And it does really well into Thunderous because it can wall it out as, as well as like Regieleki. So it's it's like a really good Pokemon, but I mostly consider it just a means to an end for a partner Venusaur. So yeah, those are the top used Pokemon in my particular tournament. Uh, I'm sure that it varies with, you know, a larger sample size or a smaller sample size. So I wanted to go over those. Um, I, I think it's a pretty balanced format, to be honest. I think that if we look at the results of the tournament, obviously top five were missing the team from Negator and Soul. Um, but I did put out like multiple tweets and community posts asking, hey, if you guys know these teams or if you guys know the people who ran them, please, you know, send it to me. So we don't know those two. But if we look at like the top teams, number one, uh, we see Azation and Apalkia with just standard support mons, Incineroar, Amoongus. Zapdos is really good in this format, in my opinion. It's, it's crazy we didn't see more of it um, in terms of usage. Uh, and a dark Urshifu. I don't have like the exact details for the teams. I just have the six. Uh, I think that like this is a very solidly put together team. Uh, it does well versus rain teams because you have a bulky Zapdos, you have Palkia, you have your Amoongus. Like it, the four that you bring to that matchup is very obvious. The four that you bring to a Sun matchup is very obvious. Like it's it's so clear what you need to do in each matchup that it's like a very easy team to pilot. And that's why it's so successful. Like anyone, like obviously like Juanma is an amazing player if he got number one in a 206 person ladder tournament. But what I'm saying is when the team is easier to pilot, 
the better results you can expect. So the combination of being a great player along with having a very easy to pilot team just gives you very, very good results. And that's why we saw him at, at first place. Um, I would say that like the only thing Palkia doesn't like facing in this format is like play roughization, uh, which obviously you can like fix that. Yeah, like you can deal with that matchup with like a, a Zapdos and an Incineroar, like you can deal with that, right? Uh, but also Calyrex Ice Rider is kind of like a, a middling matchup for this thing. So having in a Dark Urshifu, which isn't as common in this format as it used to be, um, makes the matchup much, much easier versus Trick Room teams like that, especially since the Calyrex can't protect versus the Dark Urshifu. You can just choice ban Wicked Blow that thing and it's gone. So I think we are going to see a rise in uh, Urshifu usage as we see a rise in uh, Pokemon that want to go for Trick Room like the Calyrex Ice Rider. So yeah. Next up is a team by Fuchs, and this is actually pretty interesting. Palkia Solgaleo isn't a combination I've seen. In fact, these two are widely considered like high tier, but like not top tier restricteds. And the fact that there's the fact that like he chose to run Solgaleo over Zacian is interesting, but it sort of makes sense, right? Uh, the com also just this general combination of team of like Pokemon of the team is wacky. We have an Entei, we have a Raikou, we have an Umbreon, we have a Tornadus. I don't know how the team functions. All I know is it did. I would imagine this team definitely had a Trick Room mode since Palkia is a Pokemon that wants to run Trick Room and Solgaleo is a Pokemon that can run Trick Room as well as like a weakness policy. Um, I would say the Raikou likely had screens as a way to make everything just a bit bulkier without having to lock in a fairy type. Uh, and also you're able to deal with opposing Kyogre pretty well because this thing's decent special defense. And Entei is like the thing that I didn't expect to see. If I were to like change anything about this team, I would change that Entei to an Incineroar, but I, I didn't win the, I didn't like get second place in the tournament, so I'm not really one to speak. The Entei is interesting. I have no idea what it would do. Um, but yeah, like this whole team is just wacky and it worked. And I guess that's like what we can take away from it. It's hard to really tell what what happens here and maybe that's like a contributor as to why it did so well so yeah i'm really interested to see what uh number three and number five had uh but we're gonna move on to devin and this team he actually messaged me uh was a team made in collaboration with scotch tape vgc so shout out to him as well and devin said that he thinks calyrex plus kyogre is a very strong combination in this metagame it's like a very strong archetype and i'm you know i'm one to agree i think that calyrex kyogre Mimikyu, and amoongus like just those four are super super good together uh because calyrex wants to set up the trick room like i said earlier kyogre helps deal with like every single calyrex counter except for arguably zation but if you're able to get like some speed control with the regieleki well all of a sudden the the kyogre can one shot zation so yeah uh incineroar is like great support for setting up the trick room and if you have a Mimikyu next to a Calyrex, like you can already tell like 99.9% .9 of the time the Calyrex is going to be running a weakness policy. I do have the details of this team uh, submitted to me by Devin himself, so I do know what's going on here, uh, but I don't want to, you know, show it off to the world in case he doesn't want it to be terribly public. But yeah, like this is just a very solid, easy to pilot team that is going to get you good results. So uh, I want to know those other two Pokemon or the other two Pokemon on like the teams, uh, but we only have this much info so far. I think that the tournament was a pretty good success. We got a good representation of uh, what we can expect the format to look like out of you know a 200 person sample size. And we got to see some interesting stuff do really, really well in the tournament, like this um, Urshifu plus Palkia Zacian team and this Palkia Solgaleo team. So the fact that there are two Palkia Steel type combos in top five uh, is just super, super cool to me. So yeah, uh, I will be hosting the Moxie Boosted Brawl ladder tournaments every Thursday. Uh, or every Tuesday at uh, 5 to 8 p.m., I believe. And I am going to be streaming them, but I want to let you guys know uh, that I really appreciate you all supporting this first one. And there might be prizes down the road. There might not be. As of right now, I wanted to run it as more of an experiment to see what uh, usage stats we can expect in the future. So yeah, that's just the results of the tournament. If you guys have any questions, obviously just comment them down below. Leave a like in the video and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.